introduction to experimental design so this is actually a very short chapter we might even finish it and go on to the next chapter today this chapter simply says what is experimental design so what are the terminal what is it what are the terms and what are the common mistakes and then we teach you in the next chapter how to do it right so experimental design basically means um, if you are going to do any measurement or if you are going to do any simulation you need to decide what values of the factors you are going to use all right and how and the second thing is how you are going to analyze the results both questions are related so we'll show you how you can do what values of values of parameters you need or factors you need and then this develop a model that best describes the data <clears throat> then new thing that we teach you is that estimate the contribution of each alternative to the performance and so you want to isolate there are many many factors and you want to isolate the effect of each factor and then you want to isolate the measurement errors so there is analysis involved right estimate the confidence interval just like we did for regression we are going to do confidence interval for everything check if the alternatives are significantly different so basically we will find out whether they are 90% confident you know 90% 95% whatever they are different and check if the model is adequate and so we will have the visual um, test yeah you have a question the alternatives between what huh? the alternatives between what if the alternative basically here alternative means that the one of the variables is has five values five types of cpus those are the five alternatives so, i mean basically check if different values of the factor are diff, uh, result different thing right so so here is a design here is a, a problem suppose we want to design a personal workstation and we have a choice of three cpus now this design as you can see is dated but um, you can change in cpu type and it's still valid though so 68000 z80 and 8086 memory size now you just change g, g k to maybe g is 8 gigabit m to z is in the value valid but this is in those days these were numbers so 68000 z80 the memory size of these three different memory sizes three different number of disks four different number of disks three different kinds of workloads and the users three different kinds of users all right now the one possibility would be to do every possible combination and before i go to every possible combination there are two terms i have used in this already this example one is a factor second is the level so we have five factors here and each factor has some number of levels so this factor has three levels this factor has four levels this factor has three and so on so forth so those are the levels okay we will use those two terms now continuously i mean in this whole part factors and levels so we have five factors and at 3 3 3 3 4 3 levels so if you multiply that you will get 81 times 4 200 and um, 34 24 324 you get 324 level, uh, experiments are you going to do 324 experiments well you could but the thing is each experiment even if it took an hour you know you would be in for days and uh, those users may get tired and uh, and so on so forth right so you really you cannot do that if you were doing simulation you cannot do that so so what do you do well i mean it turns out that experimental design this is a cartoon and i want to go through this is that um, experimental design is very common in medical research it's not so common in in um, in computer science uh, it's very common in agricultural research so whenever they do any medical research any any drug effect or something like that they give away a placebo right and then it, sometimes it helps right so so here the exercise says that this doesn't help you don't worry it's a placebo right and so they figure out whether really it is the it is the, just the thinking that you are getting a medicine or is it really medicine which is affecting but we don't do that kind of thing in computer science so i'm bringing that in here trying to bring that in here um so here are the words response variable 
again we had run, we had learned that word in regression response variable is the y variable the outcome which could be throughput response time whatever we are doing factors those are the basically x variables the cpu type memory size these are all the factors levels we talked about different the i i chose the word level by the way uh, because that is more computer sci scientist like than the treatment in the most of the com if you read the books on experimental design they use the word treatment which is good for medical applications and for um, agricultural applications right when they treat the land with the fertilizer but in computer science we don't treat much so we use the word level primary factors factors whose effect needs to be quantified all right and then um, everything else is secondary the factors whose effect need not be quantified is the workload the so workload we are changing so those are those are clearly the factor but we really don't want to know how much one workload is different from the other we don't care replication now it's not only that you have to do 324 experiments each experiment has to be repeated many times right and that is called a replication and so the design is basically figuring out how many experiments to do what should be the levels at those and how many repetitions we need that is an experimental design and um, and then we won't use this word experimental unit but i'm just putting it here for completeness is any entity that is used for experiment and um, for example the users and so on and so forth but we are not really interested in that and our goal is to minimize the effect of this reason more of a noisy things you know basically things that uh, create noise in our results and we want to minimize the effect of them all right one no more term interaction so here is a result for example we take two factors a1 and a2 b1 and b2 we run four experiments with a1 and b1 we get 3 with a2 and b1 we get 5 and 6 and 8 and so on so forth. Right. So if I ask you what is the effect of A1 versus A2, you could clearly see that whenever you go from A1 to A2, you increase the performance by two. Whenever you go from B1 to B2, you increase the performance by three. Right. That's very good. However, if the results were like this, three, five, six, nine, instead of eight, you have a nine. Now you cannot make that statement. When you go from A1 to A2, how much is the effect? It's two if it is B1. It is three if it is B2. I don't see that. You don't see that. No, I don't see that even from the first one. For the first one, mm -hmm. you know, here you see that regardless of what is B, A A affects performance by two. Eight is two times six. No, plus. not factor plus. And here it is plus two or plus three, right? Similarly, if I ask what is the effect of B, you will say, well, B changes the performance by three if it is A one, but it changes by four if it is A two. So you cannot make a statement about A without knowing the value of B, and you cannot make a statement about B without knowing the value of A. So we say that in this case A and B are interacting. In this case, there is no interaction. Okay. So now we will figure out how to how to estimate the interaction too. But basically, these are the common mistakes. If you now this is, but this is what if you were to do the experiments today without having taken this module, then this is what the mistakes might make. First of all, the variation to the experimental errors is ignored. right you don't know what is the error because you did the experiment you need replications for those important parameters are not controlled something that can affect the performance is totally left uncontrolled effects of different factors are not isolated so you you really can't figure out what is the effect of this factor what is the effect of a b and c and so forth 
people uh, can't figure this out. I mean, generally they will just leave it right here, this like this, and it might even be a graph. They might show four graphs, and they will feel they have, they have done their job, but they have not really isolated the effect. Effect of different factors are not isolated. Simple one factor at a time design are used. What is one factor at a time design? That is coming up in the next slide, so I will hold on to that thought. Interactions are totally ignored, and too many experiments are conducted. So, so either they will just do all possible combination, in which case they will be busy for six months, and they can justify it because they are doing PhD thesis, but they cannot justify it they are being paid in a job. Right? In a paid job, basically the manager will not uh, pay you, you know, to conduct that many experiments when, you know, if somebody else can do it in a shorter time. So what we suggest is two phases. So, so the thing is, let's take this previous example here. We don't know how good this number 3 is. Okay? If you repeated it, it could be 3.1, could be 5, 4, so that you have to repeat the same thing many times to figure out what is the experimental error. See what I mean? They just do once and they just plot the graph. Oh, no. Yeah, so for example, it is quite possible that how many files you have on your disk really affects the performance of what you are measuring. You know, your disk is full, right? And they are not controlling that. They are not really keeping track of how much the disk is full. Right, so the thing is, um, we, we, are, we are not thinking that you are making any mistakes. But here we use the word X error is in the things that you cannot predict. So this is the randomness is what we call the error here, is statistical error rather than, you know, bug, you know, we are not talking about any bugs being in the simulation or anything like that, right? So the statistical error is basically if you measure the same thing because the temperature was different, the result is different and so that is just the randomness in the result. Alright, so two phases. So I will become clearer when we go to the in this one as we two phases um, uh, the two phases are actually I think it's too early to decide what to to, to explain what two phases is. I, I will skip that one for now. Um, we'll come back when we talk about uh, uh, fractional factorial design. Anyway, so the simplest design these are used is where people do one factor at a time. What they will do is, they will say, okay, well, we have these five factors, which we saw in the example before, but I will just change the user from secretarial, uh, from high school to college graduate and see if there is any difference. If there is no difference, we forget the users from now on. Then we will see if there is a difference between this CPU and that CPU. If there is no difference, we will forget that now on. And then we just, so one thing at a time. Alright? If you do that, the number of experiments is kind of very low. All you need is 1 plus n i minus 1 sigma from i through 1 through k. n i is the i -th factors level. Right? The problem with this design is this gives you the number of experiments. For that many experiments, you could do better, much better, with some different values. So this is not statistically efficient. Efficient means you put how much work you put and how much information you got out of it. And it can obviously give you wrong conclusions if the factors have interaction. And therefore we never recommend this design. The other extreme is full factorial design. Where you are going to do all possible combination and the number of experiment is equal to the product of NIs. Product of the number of levels, right? The this will help you find all the factors, but it will take too much time and money. And therefore, you can try something different, which again, I, I would just leave that thought for a minute, because we will explain you what 2 raised to k design is, and then we'll come, uh, then you can use that. Then there is a fractional factorial design, which is what we'll, you will learn new, is that this is less than, less than that, full factorial, and um, it will save you time and expense, less information, may not get all the interaction, but not a problem if negligible interaction. If you already know that some interactions are negligible, then you can reduce the number of experiments. So that is what really the goal is to teach you about the fractional factorial design. So here is the fractional factorial design. So that problem which we had 324 experiments, 
actually you can do 81 experiments which are um, so actually that is not the same problem so here here is a different problem what we have done is we have we are we are taking similar examples when instead of four levels so let's say we have everything at three levels so we have three cpus three memories three workloads and three so this would be 81 experiments instead of 81 we can do nine and this is the combination of nine which is kind of not easy to understand how i came up with this combination but basically we have um, this cpu this memory level this manager workload this high school and then with some magic we came up with this whole list and now we can tell you the effect of each factor and interaction and many interactions and so on and so forth so this is actually fractional factorial design but how we came up with this table is something that you will learn in later on so the summary is that the goal of proper experimental design is to get the maximum information with minimum number of experiments and both both are important point you want don't want to do all possible experiments you want to do minimum number of experiments and you want to get the maximum information and then factor levels full factorial designs and so now you know these three words factors levels and full factorial design full factorial design is simply all possible combinations right and so with that let's um, exercise 16.1 which is the homework performance of a system is being dependent upon three cpu types three operating systems three disk drives uh, how many experiments are required to analyze the performance so three times three times there if there is significant interaction you need full factorial if there is no interaction then you can do with simple one if the interactions are small compared to the main effects then you can do anything in between right uh, in between numbers can be guessed somewhat easily because if you have three raised to four design, this is three raised to four problem, right? You can try three raised to three, three raised to two, and three raised to one. Well, three raised to one would be too small for four factors, so three raised to two is the minimum. And that's but I I, I mean basically hold on to this these numbers. I'm just saying anywhere between between. 3 and 81 experiments, uh, sorry, 4 was the minimum number. If you did simple like one factor at a time design, you will have, you will have, uh, you will end up with 2 plus 2 plus 2. No, actually you will end up with 6 plus, sorry, 8 plus 1, 9 experiments, the sim simple one factor at a time design. I think so, right, because the number was ni minus 1. If everything is 3, 3 minus 1, so you add up 2 and you get, a simple design will require 9 experiments. But these nine experiments are much better. So, is there a specific technique to get? Yeah, right, right. That is that is what we are going to teach you. Yeah. So you are not going to. So in the in this exercise, I am not even asking you that design. I am just asking what are the val what are the number of experiments that you think you will need. So if it is if there is significant interaction, then you need to do all possible combinations. If there is no interaction, then only thing right now you know is one factor at a time. Now the question is, if there is small, then there are other possibilities. And some of those possibilities have to do with those powers we talked about, 3 raised to 2, 3 raised to 3. 